All right, good morning, everyone. It's amazing to see uh, all of you here, a lot of familiar faces, a lot of new ones, too. So I'm uh, Nathan Benesh, um, and uh, I'd love to welcome you here today to the third Research and Apply AI Summit. So the reason why I'm here is because I'm fundamentally excited about driving impactful technology. And that's either with working through um, startups as an investor, but also as an advisor um, for businesses that are solving really important problems that fundamentally can only be cracked using machine learning. Or even in a previous life when I was an academic, um, I was doing research science to try and understand the genetic underpinnings of cancer and why cells spread around the body and kind of scratch a, a new itch now, um, surveying the scene um, in artificial intelligence, in the technology world, the research world, and also the venture landscape. And most importantly, through community activities like this, whether it's RISE or London.ai. And the thing I care most about is artificial intelligence. And it's very clear and not really uh, much news to any of you that really AI is the front of mind um, over and above everything else in terms of new emerging technology trends, whether that's genome editing or virtual reality or augmented reality. Um, this chart may look a little bit different if we, if we look at the increasing price of Ethereum and initial coin offerings, but we'll kind of ignore this. Um, and, uh, and the interesting thing is that a lot of us in the ecosystem, uh, many of us not in this room, just can't help but fuel this hype. So whether it's you know, believing that we might live in a simulation and perhaps as a company that's even building the simulation, or that you know, one of us might become the first trillionaire because our companies are powered by AI, or frankly that just AI is going to save your life, um, th th there's just a ton of hype out there. And the reason why this, ex this event exists is really to add signal to that noisy environment. So I started this in 2015 um, because I genuinely care about adding signal in a noisy environment. And to be clear, the mission of this event is really to inspire entrepreneurs and researchers to solve really important problems that actually move the needle in the world. It may sound cliche, but that's genuinely what I want to do. And the key focus is really on accelerating both the science, crucially, and the application of artificial intelligence technologies. And we do this, as I mentioned, um, in order to increase the signal in a noisy environment and drive impact. And the way we do this is by bringing all of you here today. So you represent an amazing segment of this vibrant community, both um, from industry and from academia. And very crucially, you're actually involved in building this future. You're not just a bystander. And so to give you a snapshot of who's in the room, and I really encourage you to go meet each other, because uh, we spent many hours curating this entire list and received quite a bit of hate mail for people who are not in this room. So I really encourage you to, to meet each other. Um, so you represent large technology companies. Um, I won't name names to pick favorites, but you can recognize a lot of them here. Um, many leading technology companies that are solving very important problems and using machine learning at their core. And importantly, they don't come just from the UK or even London. They come from all over. And um, another crucial component of this is, is the academic world. So they're representative, representatives from leading institutions in the UK and more broadly, and also government institutions that are involved in sort of setting the agenda um, from a policy point of view. And uh, of course, you know, none of this is genuinely not possible without uh, amazing sponsors. And, uh, and I just want to remind you that this is a complete nonprofit event. So you know, really, without having any of these involved, it's just not, like, not possible to run it. Um, and so of course, you know, a huge thank you to the Google Cloud team. Um, I don't really need to introduce what they do, but you know, they're one of the most powerful um, cloud providers in the world. Um, a special thank you to David Rolden here at the front. Um, his email and contact details are here. I really encourage you to reach out to him. Um, anything with regards to running a startup and using Google Cloud uh, in Europe, he's your man. And quite awesomely, he's uh, managed to secure three grand in free Google Cloud credits for any researcher, academic, or startup that's physically in the room today. So that's why you went through this laborious check-in system. We'll reach out to you afterwards, and you have some free money to play with some awesome tools. Um, and of course, uh, a huge thank you to the team at Cooley who are coming back to support us again this year. And it's a, it's a massive honor to have you involved. They're one of the best law firms in the world and working with amazing businesses like Improbable and SoftBank and Uber. Um, so there's a couple of their team here. And specifically, if you want to learn more about how they can help your technology business, you should speak with Aaron Archer. 
uh, who's a good friend and uh, he's around somewhere. Uh, I won't try and name him, shame him. And, uh, and of course, as I mentioned, this is a, this is a nonprofit. And so, uh, so we're really excited here because we asked all of you to support us in this mission. And so all of you uh, contributed in order to come to this event. And every single pound that you invested in this is going to Code Club, which is a nationwide volunteer network of after-school coding programs for kids between 9 and 11. And thanks to all of your contributions, we've raised about 5,000 pounds. And that goes towards um, supporting a whole year for 50 code clubs across the country. And we see around 750 kids going to these programs every single week. So we're really trying to pay it forward and ensure that future generations are really clued up with respect to uh, building the future with, um, with technical skills. So I thank you a lot for that. And uh, of course, it's, it's been 12 months since we were uh, in an auditorium not too far away from here. And uh, there's been a, you know, a huge amount of excitement that's come into the industry. So clearly one of the most uh, common topics of conversation these days is self-driving. Everyone and their friend really wants to be starting one of these companies. So do you, do you have an idea of how many uh, businesses are actually authorized to test autonomous vehicles in the state of California? Do you have a guess of how many there were last year? Like five, 10, 11? 15, that's a bit high. <laughs> okay, so we had 11, uh, and that's up from seven last year. But quite crazily, uh, today is 36. So basically, everyone and their friend is jumping in this race. I actually had to update this slide two days ago because there was another three that popped up. Um, so, you know, incredible excitement. Um, a lot of this is powered by machine learning, many tools that we'll hear about today. But AI is not only involved in self-driving. Um, it's actually going into solving problems which were previously intractable without these tools. Um, so for example, it's being used to discover new medicines, new drugs that could be used for um, curing degenerative disease. It's being used as a point of care diagnostic to detect cancer. Um, it's being used in order to develop entirely new hardware, um, analyze imagery that we're gathering from space, and also mapping the world collaboratively. And it's clearly an existential priority for five out of the five most valuable public companies in the world that are now all technology businesses. They account for over three trillion in market capitalization. And every single one of them is articulating a strategy as to how they're moving from a cloud-based company to a mobile-first company to a machine learning-driven company. And this is really setting the trend for the entire market. 2016 was a, another record year in terms of financings. There's been over $5 billion invested in companies that can be broadly associated with AI. And, um, and there's been some huge financing rounds as well, whether that's for self-driving or many of the companies that we'll hear about today, including Orbital Insight, Darktrace, and Graphcore. So an extremely exciting time to be in the business. And commensurate with that, we've seen a flurry of acquisitions, so many liquidity events actually happening increasingly because those large five technology companies are seeing this as existential. So we've seen a you know, flurry of acquisitions from Intel, including a massive one for 15 billion for Mobileye, and Apple has also been pretty active too. So this is really setting the tempo for what it's like to be in this field. And last but not least, the research environment is incredibly active. Um, I don't bump into a researcher today that is just physically incapable of dealing with the volume of papers that are submitted to archive. And uh, having been at NIPS last year in Barcelona, it's it hit an all-time target in terms of attendance. There's over 5,000 people who registered, and it's basically the next coolest thing after South by Southwest. Um, and, uh, and that's because there's been some new developments in architectures, whether that's generative models or new models of reinforcement learning. Um, and then emerging trends like making machine learning models more data efficient, which is important for improving competition in the market or endowing networks with memory so they can solve increasingly uh, a large number of tasks without forgetting what they did before, or creating new hardware, as mentioned previously. And the next step forward is entirely autonomous decision-making systems, which we'll also hear about today. And so, so really, um, I'm, uh, I'm super excited to welcome this amazing group of people who have uh, entrusted us with their time uh, in order to be with us today. Um, they're all here because they also care about community and they want to meet everybody here in this room. They're building impressive companies and, uh, and I encourage you to interact with them.